Hey there kids, it's Michelle Zagombic, your teacher, and I'm here to take you through uh, the importance of the steam engine, which a lot of you will be thinking of the Industrial Revolution, and bravo if you are, because that's exactly what we're talking about. But before we do, let me just explain how actually it dates way back earlier than that. So who created the first steam engine? You would be thinking, oh, it's the 1700s. Well, you might not be thinking that, but maybe you were. And actually, you'd be wrong if you were. Um, to be honest with you, it dates way back to ancient times. There was a Greek inventor named Hero of Alexandria. He uh, lived in, the, uh, in Roman Egypt, and he was a mathematician and an engineer. And he came up with this really primitive version, which you can see right here. And it has a fire at the bottom. And then it has a pedestal with a bowl for some water. And then that water would be boiling and create steam through these pipes, which would end up in this sphere at the top, be pushed out through these small tubes, which would release the steam. And because the steam has different pressure and the molecules are spreading out quickly, um, it's a different uh, pressure than the atmosphere and it would propel uh, this ball to move, which movement makes power. So uh, pretty clever. Everybody thought that was really cool back then, but they didn't do anything with it. So uh, it wasn't really used as an engine. It was just a cool toy, I guess. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know what I've been reading. It seems like there was more of a novelty at any rate. So, uh, so then how was the steam engine introduced in the 1800s and 1700s actually um, is when it first really started to gain its ground. So how did that all come about? Well, we can blame it on these guys over here. They are British glass blowers, and apparently uh, they preferred to use coal over wood. In fact, most of the fuel source uh, was changing over because um, in Great Britain, they had limited resources to uh, limber, uh, lumber and, and wood. And um, it was very expensive because of that, because the supply was limited. So what they did find, though, was that they had tons of coal underground. And because they had tons of coal underground and coal could burn fire just as efficiently as wood could, if not better and longer, and hotter, um, they began to mine it within the grounds of, um, of Great Britain. So in the mines, the problem was, was that the mine shafts would begin to flood. So uh, we have the introduction of the two Thomases. You see, when the mine shafts flooded, um, they weren't able to extract the coal. So this was a problem. The glass blowers suggested that somebody come up with a, an idea quick to help them uh, save these flooding mines. And Thomas Savory came in in 1698 and introduced the water pump. And the water pump would uh, get water out of those mines. But the problem was it wasn't as effective. It didn't have much uh, in the way of moving parts and it could only reach shallow uh, territories. Um, so, and, and ironically enough, it required coal, as you can see here in this uh, illustration, required coal to make the pump work. And what it was doing was taking water out of the shafts that provided coal, which then they would give back to the mine pump to help it pump the water out. So it was a weird cycle uh, going on, but a lot of the coal did go to, um, you know, factories, you know, well, not factories yet, but um, these glass blowers and other people looking for fuel. Actually, they did have factories, but they were uh, powered by water wheels instead. And then what happened was uh, they were thinking, well, couldn't somebody else come along and invent something better uh, that will function better? And so what happened? This man here, Thomas Newcomen, steps in at, in 1711 and introduces this early steam engine that has moving parts. Now, interesting to me, and I have question marks here, is because I was looking up pictures on Thomas Newcomen, and I was also looking up pictures on James Watt. And interestingly enough, Google kept turning up this picture of this man for both searches. So, and I tried to look at credible sources, and most of the ones I picked up early on kept, uh, they didn't actually have pictures at all of the uh, men. They just had uh, words and other uh, illustrations. 
So I wonder which guy is this? Is this Thomas or is this James? So it's kind of neat, but kids, make sure you know who your sources are. And if you don't know, make sure you say so, like I did right here. So I'm not exactly sure which man that is, but I thought that you'd find that interesting anyway. Um, so the early steam engine, although uh, was great, had some issues. The main issue was that it caused explosions because one of the, uh, it needed a cooling chamber. It needed to cool down in between uh, and it did not have that in its design. So it would explode on people, which is quite dangerous. So uh, they realized, well, this is not a very stable invention. And they did look for um, somebody to find a change to it. He will come, but before he does, just to let you know, for the next 50 years, they will use Thomas, is that your picture, new come in, and his um, steam engine to provide water for small towns to uh, reduce the flooding in farm fields and to extract water from those and to also move water from the base of a water wheel to the top of it to provide better power for uh, factories that were run on water power. Uh, so who is gonna come up with this new and improved steam engine that we've grown to love today? Well, his name is James Watt. And these are many different illustrations of the new and improved steam engine. James Watt uh, came up with this uh, invention in 1765. He was a, a Scottish inventor who worked at Glasgow University. And he was trying to repair Thomas Newcomen's device and realized that it wasn't um, designed efficiently enough and needed this addition of a cooling chamber uh, and things like that to make it more productive and uh, safe. So James Watt came up with this model and that's the model we know of today. I found it kind of fascinating that he didn't have money to actually produce it right off the bat. He needed to find somebody that actually had money. Um, I'm not sure how much they got paid as, you know, employed by Glasgow University to be on their staff. So something was a problem, but he wasn't making enough money. So he did find an entrepreneur, a British entrepreneur who said, you know what, this steam engine is going to do more than just pull water out of flooded mines. We're going to use this steam engine for factories and, um, you know, use it to make products. So uh, his name was Michael Bolton, and he is going to help fund the cause. And from there on, the rest is history. What else can I tell you? Well, when you think of James Watt, you probably think of a light bulb. And uh, I do not want you to be misunderstood. You think of light bulbs, uh, but he is not the inventor of the light bulb. Watts, if you think about light bulbs, there's a 40 watt light bulb and a 120 watt light bulb. What's the difference? Power usage. It's how bright the light bulb is. So if you want to be reading someplace and get yourself in the mood to sleep, I would choose a lower wattage. So that way you have a nice soft light to read by. Um, also on your house, you have these power boxes that shows you how many watts are being used in your house. So watt is actually a measurement of power. It's a term of power, a unit, really. Um, and you'll find those watts around. So <clears throat> let me first explain how the steam engine works. And by looking at illustrations like these, sometimes it might help you understand what's going on, uh, you know, where you have a furnace and it's heating up water and that creates steam and the steam is going to push on things and then it's going to hit pistons and the pistons are going to force things to move and then that movement creates power. But for me, that's really hard to understand. So what I do is I like to think of SpaghettiOs. So SpaghettiOs, I, uh, growing up, we didn't have microwaves. We would have to put our um, canned soup on a stove. Um, I think microwaves were introduced when I was in high school. I, I think we got one around then. Um, I know I'm ancient, but um, <clears throat> we would pour a can of SpaghettiOs into this pot and then we would put the li lid on and then we would turn it on and heat it up. And if we walked away for too long, what would happen is it would start to bubble and then the bubbles would create steam or water vapor coming up, 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 out. And then they would start pushing on the lid because steam and the heated molecules force the um, air to take up more space. Water becomes a gas and it takes up more space. And as a result, it starts pushing on that lid and the lid starts bouncing up and down and up and down. And that is how um, your steam 
creates movement and movement equals power. So that's my SpaghettiOs analogy and I hope uh, that helps you understand